Mining companies that are exposed to battery minerals on the ASX are up between 44 and 69% over the last month when we zero in and have a look at the leaders in this space. We're talking about lithium, copper, cobalt, nickel, tin, aluminium, and other companies that are exposed to the value chain in created electric vehicles, batteries, lithium ion batteries, and the battery technology that we know in the 21st century. What we're looking at on the chart on the left hand side is the copper price. So that is also a proxy for the electronics and the demand that we do see in this space that's consistently more and more entwined with that lithium ion space and the battery space. On the right hand side we have a table showing the monthly performances of these commodities as well as the top ETFs and the index itself. Starting at the bottom there's ACDC which is an ASX ETF that shows the exposure to battery technology, lithium ion batteries and the like. You can see that's somewhat flatlined. That's not where we're seeing the performances because that was 6.54%. The leaders are up 60, 69% strong gains. The market itself in the ASX is 3.9%. And then if we have a look at the commodities, the strongest has been tin, which as more and more patents are listed in the lithium ion or the next stage of batteries that have less lithium, we're finding that a lot of these patents have more exposure to tin. We also know there's a lot of nickel, there's also graphite, cobalt, and the likes that go into these anodes and how they're made. But the top performer there is tin over the fortnight, but when we have a look and jump into the mining companies on the ASX, we see some familiar names, because number six is Pilbara Minerals. 44.7% gain, massive run up yesterday after breaking out. We were looking at this as a VCP back here in May, as it did break out, and then the breakout once again only two, three weeks ago in that July period, late July, and then shooting out after a bit of a trading halt as well. So PLS, we've looked at that many times before. That comes in at number six. Number five is AGY, Argosy Minerals. Familiar names for those who consistently watch Final Market Points. Again, you can subscribe for the updates. You can like the video to support the channel and comment below to let us know which battery technology companies you're exposed to and which commodities. But AGY, Argosy Minerals, that is a company that has a lower market capitalization, a higher leverage to the share price movements in comparison to Pilbara. Pilbara is trading at $2.33, Argosy $16.50. As you can see, traded below that 10 cent level. On this red line here, that's a 200 day moving average. So it came in compressed on that under the 50 day moving average, the green one. As they came in closer and closer, we saw getting back as it broke over the 50 day moving average, shot up with a bit of volume, you can see down here and then drifted back to the 50 day, sat on it for some tight closes. We zoom in here, because this is something that Wyckoff theory looks at, and see this close here. We've got one, two, three, almost four closes within the whole range of the 24th of June. And while that can, that's often a precursor to a movement in Wyckoff theory, what they look at, and you do see this is a strong fourth candle, strong, strong close, closing on the high, and a reasonable volume in comparison to the lower days before, and then it does break out. So that's interesting for Wyckoff theory and those who follow that, and that did lead to the breakout that's come from over 10 cents, getting up to 16, closing at 16 and a half cents yesterday. That's Argosy Minerals being number five. A favorite for those in Australia, and then the dual listing in the US over the counter. We've got Lake Resources, 45% gain over the month, just beating Argosy. What we did see is come back over the last two days, getting over the 65 cents, closing at 66 cents on the 6th of August, and did trade and break out over the 50 day moving average. This green line here, when it finally got over there, it shot out with some volume, seeing down, we'll zoom in once again to make this volume more obvious. As it broke out, highlighting here the volume down the bottom, the green bar shooting up over the 50 day moving average, Sellers tried but were unable to get any further traction as it broke out and then it shot back up for some strong green candles here and gaining. Falling back some way 50% or so of that breakout, turning sideways and then seeing this 10 day moving average using that as somewhat of support along the way up to where it is now. Which is again if you're looking at Chris, Chris <laughs> Jill Morales and Chris Karcher and what they call themselves as the O'Neill Disciples. This 10 day moving average being the blue line is very critical and important to that uptake, that trend that has been moving up here. And following their patterns would not have been stopped out after it broke out from a pocket pivot here over the 50 day moving average. Interesting ways to trade that lake, lake resources, LKE, dual listed. Coming up to number three for the month, we've got Core Lithium, obviously exposed to the lithium side of things and the lithium ion batteries, battery mineral technology, this is a common theme that we have seen with lithium miners. Strong December, January, a bit of a pullback through to March, breaking out some 
moving upwards in April, again a sideways churn May, June, and then sort of July, August, running up to where they are now into trading halt, but still coming into the trading halt, they are ranked number three in this battery minerals technology and exposure and supply chain that we're looking at. That's CXO Core Lithium. Moving up to number two, LPD Lipidico, company we have looked at many times before when we see the chart. It's really easy to understand why with that huge breakout. Now it has pulled back down under the red line, 200 day moving average, great concern, coming back to where it broke out before, big concerns. What it did do is it has sort of, what was resistance has sat on that as support, touched it once, twice, and then tried to come back down, didn't, maintained a higher low. And then as you see down the bottom here, good strong volume with these massive green candles breaking out over the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. As it stands, the 50 day moving average, the green line is still below the red line, the 200 day moving average. And that can be a concern for a lot of technical traders who want to see that 50 day moving average over the 200 day, the green over the red, and that's a positive sign for them to get involved. But as we've seen before with Argosy, that lower share price does give massive leverage into the share price movements that we are seeing flow through from say the commodity prices and the interest in this space. Now we want to have a look at the top performer for the month, LEL recent listing, Lith Energy. That share price is phenomenal. Look, it's coming from 35 cents up to over 80 just recently. Barely a pause in that. This is a critical aspect for looking for high tight flags. So as we see from Thomas Bolkowski, he's a lot of statistics, a lot of research into high and tight flags, and many US trading championship winners and high ranked performers have used high and tight flags as well. The main criteria is to see a good shoot up within sort of four to six weeks, possibly eight or longer, depending on what time frame you're using, but eight general rule of thumb to see that run. We've definitely seen that in LEL, because since it did come down, sort of trawled across the bottom and bounced off, that explosive movement's more than 100% gain. And did it with a very little pause here, only a few days. Still maintained above that 10-day moving average being this blue line. So it is setting it up to be in what Thomas Bukowski would call a high and tight flag. We just need to see how that pans out and builds the flag itself to look at the behavior from then on. They're the top six in the space on the ASX. And then what we do is bring this out to have a look at their performances over the last six months. So we also want to see the quarter, start off with that, see their performances. The best ones, Lake Resources. But that's not ranking properly. Top ones, Lake Resources 91%, Argosy 64, Pilbara 61. Then we bring it out to have a look at the year. And this data is clearly not flowing through properly in Iris, but here we have a look at the top performers for the year. We've got the biggest numbers here, Lake Resources 279. You can see that on the chart, phenomenal chart. 205 on Core Lithium. We've got Pilbara at 187. These are the top performers and little wonder why we see so much interest in the channel for people wanting to look at and find more and more news about these companies. They're the top performing battery mineral exposed companies on the ASX over the last month. You can like the video to support the channel, click subscribe for updates and comment below to let us know which battery minerals you're trading and which companies you're trading.